How's it going everyone? Hope you're all doing good. Mr. Boulder back tonight with a video that I originally intended to do back in the summer but never got around to it. So this week's video is me ranking the Van Halen discography from worst to best. 12 studio albums to talk about. Uh, for me, Van Halen were definitely the blueprint for hair metal, glam metal in the 80s. Uh, a band that were definitely all about fun, all about the party, all about inviting girls along. And that was definitely what the hair metal scene was about during the 80s. For, for me, they pretty much influenced that entire subgenre. Uh, a fantastic band. A lot of people are in the camp of either David Lee Roth era or the Sammy Hagar era. Um, I don't have a horse in that race. I like both the eras. There's also another era with Gary Cherone on vocals, which only lasted one album, so very brief. So after a quick sip of coffee, we're going to get straight into it. Uh, fantastic band. Really, really love these guys. If you're familiar with Van Halen, you probably know what I'm going to show first for the last album. Um, because Van Halen 3 from 1998 is an absolute abomination of a record. And uh, it's such a shame. I had such high hopes for it. Um, I really enjoyed Gary Cherone. I think he's got a great voice, good singer, and also I love Van Halen. So when uh, these guys got together, I was hoping for a great album. And unfortunately, it's just not what you get. And the first song I ever heard was the lead single, Without You, which is pretty much the first song. There's another track before it, but it's just an intro, really. So it's the first proper song. Excellent track, very energetic, up-tempo, great hard rocking song. Uh, love the riffs. Um, chorus is really good. But other than that, um, this album is not great at all. There's some other stuff in it that's absolutely terrible. There's a couple of other decent uh, rockers like... Um, Fire in the Hole and Ballot of the Bullet, but they're not as good as Without You, it has to be said. Um, One I Want is an okay song, but stuff on this, like From Afar, um, Dirty Water Dog, Once, Josephine, A Year to the Day. A year to the Day is okay, I suppose, but the rest of the ones I've just mentioned are absolutely boring as anything. Um, Primary, How Many Say I. How Many Say I has got uh, Eddie Van Halen on lead vocals. Um... I love Eddie Van Halen, but he shouldn't be singing lead vocals. Um, the only time the vocals sound good on that song is when Gary Cherone's doing the backups and the harmonies. Just a very, very boring, dull, insipid beige album, which just disappoints me so much still now. All these years later, 24 years later, I was really had high hopes for this album, but it just doesn't deliver. They just didn't write a bunch of great songs. A lot of people, of course, pick on Gary Cherone from why this album's a failure. It's nothing to do with him on his own. The band themselves just didn't write a great bunch of songs. And this is such a disappointing album. All these years later, um, still disappoints me. Uh, not very many good points to it at all. Uh, a massive disappointment for me. So that's uh, Last Place, Van Halen 3 from 1998. Up next is uh, 1982's Diver Down. Um, main issue with this... Uh, Album. Well, there's two main issues, actually. There's three cover versions of this uh, album, and about three of the songs on the track listing, might be four, actually, are just musical interludes. Uh, for me, this screams of an album that was rushed out. Don't rush something out. Take your time. Um, yeah, it's disappointing. It's not terrible by any stretch of imagination. But here we've got a uh, kicks off with the Kinks cover, Where Have All the Good Times Gone, which is fine. I don't mind that at all, actually. It has to be said. Uh, Hang 'em High is a really good track. Um, Secrets is really good. Uh, cover of Roy Oberson's Oh Pretty Woman finishes Side A. But it's some pointless instrumental stuff on Side A. Side B kicks off with Dancing in the Street, which is another cover, which I can live without, to be honest. Little Guitars is a good song. Um, Big Bad Bill with Sweet William Now, that's a good track. But The Full Bug and Happy Trails, the last two songs. Um... Just don't do anything for me at all. There is so much filler in this album, it's ridiculous. Definitely, uh, for me, a product of an album that was rushed out. And don't rush something out. Put out something decent. Diver Down is uh, not bad by any stretch of imagination, but there's so much room for improvement, it's ridiculous. And uh, not a great album, it has to be said. Uh, up next is uh, 1988's OU812. Um... The thing that sticks out in my mind about this album, uh, the word that springs to mind, I should say, is average. I can listen to this album, enjoy it, but not at any point do I think to myself, that's an amazing song, or I don't think to myself either, that's a terrible song. Everything's just okay the whole way through. The synths are very dominant on this album. 
I mean, the synths were heavily featured during 5150 and 1984, but they're very, very dominant in this. The guitar's definitely taking a backseat. For me, it's a problem. But yeah, it's got lots of stuff on it, which is fine, but nothing that really knocks me out. Uh, it kicks off with Mine or Mine, which is really good. Um, you've got uh, When It's Love on this, which is a great power ballad that I like. Feel So Good, that's a great track. Finish What You Started, um, a great song. Stuff in there like Carbo Wabo is okay. But there's other stuff like Sucker in a Three-Piece, three, three piece, uh, Black and Blue, and a couple of others, uh, which are just okay, you know. Like I say, the guitar work on this, when you hear it, is good, but the synths are very dominant in the mix. Uh, Alex and uh, Mike Anthony doing a good job on the rhythm section, but it's just an average album. Nothing horrible about it, nothing fantastic about it, and that's why OU812 comes in at 10th place. Up next at number 9. And this is Balance from 1995. Good album. Uh, well, I should say the first half of it is very good. But after that, I don't care much for the second half at all. Um, kicks off with The Seventh Seal, which is a good opening track. Then you've got Can't Stop Loving You, which is a single. It's a rocker, but it's definitely got a ballad vibe to it, uh, as well, which is really good. Uh, some nice guitar playing, really strong chorus. Enjoy that one a lot. Uh, Don't Tell Me What Love Can Do, track three is good. Track four, Amsterdam, is my favourite. Apart from some laughable lyrics in the chorus, Wham Bam Amsterdam. It's a great track. Uh, excellent guitar intro from Eddie. Uh, the vocals are really good. Uh, drums and bass sound really nice. Excellent riffing throughout the song. Like I say, catchy chorus with some pants lyrics. But a good track. Um... Big Fat Money's a good tune. Not enough to decent ballad. But the rest of the songs on the album just kind of passed me by. Nothing terrible, but nothing that really sticks out in the memory. And this is why balance comes so low down in the um, the ranking. I have to say that when I went back and listened to this for this ranking, it was slightly better than I remember it being. But um, balance is an album that would definitely be better if the second half was as good as the first half. Number eight now. And we're going to go with... Um, their last studio album, uh, A Different Kind of Truth from 2012. The first one to feature David Lee Roth in 28 years. Um, I had high hopes for this album and it definitely delivered. It's not a knockout by any stretch of imagination, but it is very good. Uh, this, of course, has got Wolfgang Van Halen playing the bass because they never got Mike Anthony back for some strange reason. Kicks off with Tattoo, which is a song that gets shit on by a lot of people, but... I don't know why, I think it's a decent opening tune. However, the next song, track two, is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, She's a Woman is fantastic. Uh, I love Wolfgang's bass playing in the intro. Um, really energetic, very up-tempo, great track, uh, great vocals from David Lee Roth, excellent chorus, brilliant solo, the best song on the album for me, absolutely fantastic. She's a Woman is just a great song. Uh, you and Your Blues, track three is good. Uh, Chinatown I really like, that's got some nice double kick drums behind it that drive the song really nicely. Bullethead's a great track, really catchy chorus, I like that one a lot. Uh, the Trouble With Never is pretty good. Stay Frosty I really like. Uh, Big River, Beats Working. This is an album that I really, really was looking forward to and it didn't uh, disappoint at all. Like I say, it's not quite the, the masterpiece I was hoping for, but not a bad album by any stretch of imagination. This one's really good. And again, when I went back to this, um, after not listening to it for a long time, it was better than I remembered it being a different kind of truth. The last album from 2012 is a really, really strong album. Would love to get on vinyl, but it's hard to come by, it has to be said. But yeah, a good album. Um, and it turned out to be their last one. Right, number seven. Whoops. Speed fell on the floor. 5150 from 1986, the first of the Van Hagar albums. Excellent album. Uh, only the last song on this um, is the, the only one I don't really like. The rest of it is really enjoyable. Uh, kicks off a good enough. That's a great opening track. Uh, really, really strong chorus. Really enjoy it. Other great stuff on this, like the title track. Sorry, not title track. Best of Both Worlds is a great song. I love the guitar intro and that. A really good chorus. Dreams is a fantastic song. Really uplifting. Must have been written in the old major keys. Um, it's such a great track. Um, Why Can't This Be Love? Absolutely fantastic song. Bit of a ballad feel to it. Uh, but a great song. Love Walks In. I can take or leave that one, I have to say. Inside, that's the last track. Not fuss on that at all. Uh, Summer Nights is another great song. Get Up is a great track. 
yeah, it's a really, really good album. Really strong. Um, Since of getting pretty dominant here, but there's still a lot of guitar that you can hear nice and clear. Great album. Enjoy this one a lot. 5150 from 1986 is a good start to the Van Hagar era for me. Decent album. Really like that one a lot. Great stuff. Right, number six. Um, Fair Warning from 1981. Now, I hate to put this one so far down in the list, but for me, if side B was as strong as side A, then this one would be right up near the top. But for me, this album is all about side A. Side A is absolutely phenomenal, and side B is quite weak in comparison. Um, it kicks off with Mean Street, which is a fantastic song. I love the tapping intro from Eddie on the guitar. Um, a lot of the lyrics in that song as well, good chorus. Then track two is Dirty Movies, which is a fantastic song. Really enjoy that one as well. Great track. Uh, loads of hooks in it. Easy to sing along to. Sin of Swing is up next. That's a great song. Hear about it later. Closes side A. Brilliant stuff. And side B gets uh, things off on a really good uh, note. Unchained is a great track. Um, but then you come to stuff like Push Comes to Shove. It's fine. Uh, so This Is Love. I like that one. The Sunday afternoon in the park and one foot out the door, to me, are just completely pointless. And um, they're kind of throwaway tracks that spoil the album. Because um, some of the other stuff is some of the best stuff they've written for me. And that's the only reason why Fair Warning's coming in so low on this ranking. Like I said, I don't like to put it down as low as it is. But some of the stuff on Side B is really forgettable. But Side A is so strong. Some of their best stuff. Um, great guitar work throughout, obviously. David Ross vocals are good, but some real filler tracks that kind of spoil this one for me a bit, it has to be said. Into the top five now, and number five is 1991's For Unlawful Carnal Knowledge. This is an absolute beast of an album. We're getting to the really, really good stuff here when there's not a lot of uh, error at all. It's all about the good stuff. Um, fantastic stuff. I mean, this kicks off with Pound Cake, which is a great track. Uh, really up-tempo. It's got that famous um, uh, drill guitar part in it at the start. Judgment Day is another great track. Uh, very up-tempo. Those first two songs, really, for me, are driven by Michael Anthony's uh, 16th note bass playing. Excellent songs. That opening one, too, is just killer. Uh, Spanked is okay. Run Around is a really, really good song. I enjoy that. It's got great chorus. Uh, Pleasure Dome is a decent track, but um, one of the ones that's not as memorable as the others for me. Side 2 kicks off with In and Out, another song that's driven by Michael Anthony's 16th note bass playing. Drives the song really, really nicely. Up-tempo rock, a great track. Really good chorus. Uh, Man on a Mission is okay. Uh, the Dream is Over is one of the best songs on the entire album. Such a, uh, a catchy chorus, a very uplifting sounding song. Great backing vocals in that from Michael Anthony. Right Now is a great song. Um... Ballady driven by the piano, fantastic stuff. 316, I like the guitar playing that. It's basically just an instrumental break. Ends with Top of the World, an absolutely brilliant album. And the best of the Sammy Hogo era for me. Um, this kind of music was starting to struggle a little bit in the early 90s, but Van Halen delivered an absolute beast of an album. And then for an awful common lows from 1991, it's just fantastic. Easily the best of the uh, the Hagar era for me. I absolutely love this album. So many strong songs. Really, really good. Up-tempo stuff that rocks nicely. A couple of really decent sounding ballads. Excellent album. Really, really good stuff. I absolutely love this album from 1991. Front Awful Car Knowledge is a beast. Um, up next is a 1980s Women and Children First. And this is coming in at number four. Um, loads of good stuff on this one. Excellent album. These guys were definitely on top of their game back in the early 80s and the late 70s. This one kicks off with uh, And the Cradle Will Rock, which is a great track. I love that. Um, Everybody Wants Some, good track. Falls is a fantastic song, track three. Uh, Romeo Delight closes outside A. That is a brilliant song. Really up-tempo. Uh, great drums from Alex Van Halen. Um, the riffing is fantastic. Um, Annihilated did a really good cover of this, actually. And I can't remember what album it was on, but it's definitely worth uh, checking out if you've not heard it. Side A is all brilliant stuff. Side B kicks off a Tora Tora, which I'm not too fussed about. Loss of Control is okay. But Take Your Whiskey Home is really good. Um, could this be magic in a simple rhyme? You get a lot of acoustic guitar intros on Side B here. And great songs, yeah. Take Your Whiskey Home is a really great track. Sounds like a thing that was written around a sort of a campfire after um, 
have a few beers on a summer's night. Um, could this be magic? It's a really good song as well. I really enjoy that one. Side B, not quite as strong as side A, but definitely better than the side B of Fair Warning, it has to be said. But Romeo Delight is definitely for me the highlight on this album. And The Cradle of Rock's a great tune as well. Um, Take a Whiskey Home is good stuff. Excellent album, Women, Children First from 1980. I remember when I first picked this up, I, I think I'd only heard Adam The Cradle of Rock from it before. And uh, I remember just listening to it loud, spun this record so many times when I first bought it. Excellent stuff. Van Halen's Women, Children First from 1980 is a brilliant album. Into the top three now. I need to get a better copy of this. Uh, 1984, as you can see, someone saw fit to stick this massive, ugly sticker on the front of the album when they picked it up. Uh, got to show the back like that, because it's upside down. This is the album that made them sort of global superstars. Um, excellent stuff. Kicks off with the intro, which is basically the intro to Jump, which is a song that I should be sick and bored of hearing by now, but I'm just not. Uh, iconic synth riff. Uh, just a great track. Uh, massive chorus, catchy chorus. Great vocals from David Lee Roth. Should be bored of hearing it by now, but I'm not. It's just an absolutely fantastic song. I absolutely love it. So many great songs on this album, it has to be said. After that, you've got uh, Panama, which is another great song. Um, Up Tempo Rocker, that was a big single. Excellent chorus, brilliant vocals. Uh, Top Jimmy is a great track, I really like that. Um, Drop Dead Legs is another great song. Side A is all killer stuff. Side B kicks off Hot for Teacher, which has got that amazing drum intro from Alex Van Halen. I what, love watching videos they've been playing that on YouTube. It's just a great drum intro. Um, Up-tempo rocker, great guitar riffing, uh, good chorus. Then you get I, I'll Wait Next, which for me is one of the most underrated Van Halen songs. This album is a lot about partying and a lot about fun, but that sounds quite serious. Uh, good lyrics in that, dominated by the synthesizer. A lot of David Lee Roth's vocals. Uh, a great chorus, um, really catchy chorus. It's a great hook, excellent song. Ends with Girl Gone Bad and House of Pain. Last two songs, not quite as good as what's come before it, but still decent. There's fantastic riffing across this entire album and lead work, of course. Uh, David Lee Roth's vocals are great. Rhythm sections getting the job done. 1984, uh, it was my third favourite Van Halen album. Excellent stuff. Um... Yeah, the album that made the mega stars, and um, it's an album that lives up to its reputation. It's great stuff. Two left to go now. It's really hard to choose between these two. But I have decided to go with Van Halen 2 from my number two spot. Um, excellent album. As you can see here, the uh, iconic black and yellow guitar. A um, bit of trivia if you don't know this, but that guitar is actually in Dybag Daryl's coffin with him. Um, Eddie knew it was his favourite guitar, and then when he went to the funeral, he took the guitar with him to be put in the coffin for Dimebag, because he was such a massive fan. And um, Eddie said that Dime was an original, and an original deserves an original, and not just a, a copy of the guitar. So the actual guitar is in his coffin. Uh, fantastic album. Let's start talking about the music. Uh, this kicks off with a cover of You're No Good. I'm not sure who does that originally, but it's a decent opening track. Uh, Dance Not Away. Love the drum intro with the cowbell. Sounds fantastic. Uh, really, really good song. Catchy chorus. Somebody Get Me a Doctor. One of the best songs on the album. Again, an up-tempo rocker. Brilliant chorus. Great vocals from David Lee Roth. Uh, Bottoms Up's a decent tune. Out of Love Again. That's a good tune as well. On to Side B. Light of the Sky. A fantastic uh, song. Great guitar playing. Excellent chorus. Uh, Spanish Fly is just like a sort of a second version of Eruption, really, played on the uh, acoustic flamenco guitar. Dead or Alive, um, fantastic song. Women in Love, Beautiful Girls. Those last three songs are absolutely phenomenal. They are all brilliant. Uh, Women in Love, great track. Beautiful Girls. Um, the chorus of that is just massive. It's such a hook. Fantastic song. Great guitar playing. Just a fantastic album. This is only just second place. It is so good. People always talk about the first one, but the second one is equally deserving of much praise. And uh, Van Halen 2 from 1979 is my number two Van Halen album. And of course, that means that number one is their massive, massively influential debut album, Van Halen 1 from 1978. 
just an absolutely massive album. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. It's an iconic album. Um, songs from this album are getting played on hard rock radio. Still now, 34 years later. Uh, some absolutely essential stuff on this record. Kicks off with uh, Running With The Devil, that iconic, simple uh, bass intro from Mike Anthony. Uh, great song, excellent chorus. Uh, up next, you've got uh, Eruption, of course, which every guitar player was trying to learn back in the day. Um, definitely popularised the two-handed tapping thing, which had been done before by Brian May and Billy Gibbons, but it was definitely popularised by Eddie, it has to be said. Um, Ain't Talking About Love is a, a fantastic song. It's got that riff that's centred around the A minor chord. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Excellent guitar in massive song. Um, I'm the one is really good. You've got a cover of the Kinks as You Really Got Me, which is fine. Could live without it, but it's still decent. Uh, Jamie's Crying is a fantastic song. One of my favourites. That kicks off side B. Uh, Atomic Punk, a tempo song. Really love the intro guitar of that. Um, then you've got Feel Your Love Tonight, which for me is one of the best songs on this album. And it's a, an underrated gem. Uh, absolutely fantastic stuff. Uh, Little Dreamer is a decent track. Ice Cream Man can live without that. Ends with On Fire. Again, a massive song. Great guitar playing. Great vocals. But for me, Jamie's Crying and Feel Your Love Tonight are just uh, underrated gems on this album. It's got massive songs that are well known that everyone knows that are brilliant. It's got deep cuts that are fantastic. It's just a phenomenal album. I've talked a lot about David Lee Roth and her vocals and Eddie Van Halen's and guitar playing on this. But it has to be said, I do help think sometimes that the rhythm section of Mike Anthony on bass and Alex Van Halen, they do get overlooked. Um, Alex Van Halen for me is a fantastic drummer. You'll hear some great drumming across all these albums. Um, and Mike Anthony, not only a fantastic bass player, but uh, great backing vocals as well. Some of the best backing vocals you'll hear in any albums. So I think those two kind of get overlooked a bit sometimes because um, some bands are lucky to have one superstar in their lineup, whereas Van Halen had two. Obviously, with Eddie Van Halen, uh, the musician's choice, everyone knew he was, and David Lee Roth was a larger than life uh, rock star. Um, it has to be said, not the best singer, but for me, one of the best frontmen who has ever existed in the world of hard rock and heavy metal. Um, you know, that guy can go out into a stage in front of 70,000 people and by the end of the second song, he'll have everyone eating out of the palm of his hand. Not the best vocalist, but a phenomenal frontman. But Van Halen 1 is my favourite Van Halen album. It was so close between this and Van Halen 2, but I've got to go with this one just over that. Um, Feel Your Love Tonight, uh, Atomic Punk, Jamie's Crying, Running With The Devil, Ain't Talking About Love, etc, etc, etc. A massive album. With a massive reputation, it lives up to the reputation, and it's rightfully so at the top of my list for Van Halen. An absolutely phenomenal record, which I love. Just pretty much perfect. I mean, like I say, Little Dream, I can sort of uh, take or leave that, but I still can enjoy listening to it. It doesn't spoil the album, but Van Halen 1 is an absolute beast and a huge album. And that's my number one Van Halen album. Right, guys, cheers for watching to the end. It's very much appreciated. As always, get in the comments section. Let me know what you think about my ranking. What are your favourite Van Halen albums? Um, I'm probably not going to be making a video now until between Christmas and New Year. So I just want to say happy Christmas to everyone. I hope you all have a good one. And I should be back with you with a collection update in between Christmas and New Year. So until then, cheers, take care, and I'll see you soon. Laters.